In the last lesson, we saw that any truth table can be taken to an expression called a sum of products expression, right? The SOP expression. Now, what we are going to show in this lesson, a couple of things we're going to show in this lesson. The first thing we're going to show is how an expression can be quickly made into a sum of products truth table. All right, so I'm just going to come up with some sort of a sum of products expression here. How about A bar ended with B ended with C bar, okay? Ored with B bar and C bar, ored with C. All right, I don't know what that means. I just made that up. Let's go ahead and see what sort of a truth table it gives us. So we've got three inputs. So we've got a, B, and C, that gives us eight possible patterns of ones and zeros as we go down through this truth table. Hopefully I will remember all of them, right? All right, what I need is just like a big stamp, tunk, and just stamp up that thing because we're going to do a lot of these things. Anyway, now what I want to do is I want to look at each one of those products and identify, well, the, the circuit for this guy pretty simple. Let's, in fact, let's go ahead and draw this circuit now. A, B, and C, and we'll use that bus notation that I used earlier. All right, so I've got A, B, and C, these wires running along, and I just need to tap off those wires where I need the signals for each one of those circuits. Now, remember, the format of a sum of products expression was AND gates going into a single OR gate. So I've got how many AND gates? I've got one, two, three products. So there's going to be one, two, three AND gates here. And the output of all three of those AND gates is going into an OR gate. All right. Now what goes as inputs into each one of these AND gates? Well, in the first AND gate, what I've got is A bar. So the inverse of A going into the AND gate. I've got B going in. And then I've got C bar going in. So I invert C before it goes in. And so this gate right here is A bar, B, C bar. The next AND gate. Well, the next AND gate is just B bar ANDed with C bar. All right. Now, the third AND gate. Well, it really ain't an AND gate, is it? It's just a wire. So. What we're going to do is erase this AND gate here and just connect up a wire straight into the OR gate. Still a sum of products expression. So although C is not really a product, it doesn't have to run into an AND gate first. Yeah, it's still in the format of a sum of products. Let's try and clean this up a little bit. All right. So. And this guy right here was B bar, C bar. Now, when does this AND gate, and, and in fact, let's take a step back. When does this OR gate output a 1? Well, the, uh, the OR gate outputs a 1 if any of the inputs equal 1, right? Well, if I can figure out all the cases where A bar, B, C bar equal a 1, then we know that the circuit's going to equal a 1. If I can figure out all the cases where B bar, C bar is a 1, then we know we're going to output a 1. If I can figure out all the cases where C is a 1, we're going to output a 1. All right. So, I say actually be kind of a really, really a lot of 1s in this truth table. Anytime the AND gate here is outputting a 0 and the AND gate out here is putting a 0 and the C is outputting a 0, we got to have a 0. So the only times we're going to have 1s is if one of these three products is going to be outputting a 1. So when does A bar B C bar equal a 1? Well, A bar B C, is equal to, C bar is equal to a 1 when A is a 0, B is a 1, C is a 0. That happens in exactly one row of this truth table. So we know that there is a 1 there. All right. So that takes care of all the cases when this guy is equal to a 1. What about B bar, C bar? Well, where is that equal to a 1? Well, B bar, C bar is equal to a 1 when B is not equal to a 1 and when C is not equal to a 1. In other words, when B is a 0 and C is a 0. What about A? <laughs> Turns out A can be whatever it wants to be. So this guy right here, it equals a 1 when 
B is equal to a zero, C is equal to a zero, and A is equal to a one or a zero. Now, because we've removed A from this product, in other words, A is not a part of this product, and it can be two different values, this product is going to have two rows, an A, one where, where A is equal to a one and one where A is equal to a zero, two rows where we're going to output a one in this truth table. Where are they going to be? Well, it's going to be in the row 0, 0, 0. And it's going to be in the row 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0. All right. All right. Now, what about the last product, C? When is C equal to a 1? Well, C is equal to a 1 when C is equal to a 1. But what about A and B? A and B, well, a can be a 0 or a 1, and B can be a 0 or a 1. How many times does that happen? Well, there's two digits, two inputs. How many possible combinations of 1s and zeros can I have for two inputs? I can have 4, 2 to the 2, or 4. So there should be four places where this product equals a 1. And it turns out there are. There's 1, 2, 3, 4. All right? That's a truth table full of a lot of 1s. But the goal was not necessarily to show a really cool truth table. The goal was to show how to get a sum of products expression into a truth table format. And so there's only one place where we're outputting a zero. All right. So this complicated circuit actually outputs a rather simple truth table. Now, we're going to talk about something in the next lesson um, where instead of focusing on products, we're going to focus on sums. Now, we know that a product has exactly one row where there's a 1 in it, right? Well, a sum has exactly one row where there's a 0 in it. Turns out that this expression is actually, it could be represented with just a sum. What I want to do is, and, and when does a sum output a 0? Well, a sum outputs a zero when I have zero or zero or zero. So, turns out that this circuit right here, if I invert A and I invert B, I will have zero or zero or zero gives me zero. So this circuit actually is the same thing as just an OR gate with A, B, and C as its inputs. A is inverted, B is inverted, C goes straight in. Which circuit would you rather wire up? I don't know about you guys, but that's the one I'd rather wire up. Before we move on, though, I do want to talk about one more thing when it comes to sum of products expressions. Sum of products expressions, remember, we have um, from our experience with Boolean algebra and playing around with Boolean algebra, we have this thing called De Morgan's theorem, right? And De Morgan's theorem said that, and there were, there were a couple of formats of it, but one of them said that A and B, the inverse of A and B, is equal to A bar or B bar, okay? And then there was a similar format. There was A or B bar is equal to A bar and B bar, okay? Now... What I can do, let's, let's try this. If I take an OR gate with inputs A and B, and I put two inverters at its output. I mean, that's still the same circuit, right? So, so this is A or B. This guy is A or B, okay? So A or B, if I take two inverters and put it on the output, it makes a little bit more circuit, right? There's a lot more propagation, more stages to go through, more propagation delay, but it still performs exactly the same output. But in here, just this piece right here, this right here, that is this circuit, right? And so if I take this inverter, just this one, I'll leave this one out here, take this inverter and push it back through and distribute it across that OR gate, what I get is AB inverses before going into an AND gate with inverses, okay? Let's try that again. 
through De Morgan's theorem, what I'm saying is, is that an OR gate by itself is exactly the same thing as an AND gate with inverted inputs and an inverted output. So I can actually take this AND gate right here, or excuse me, this OR gate right here, and I can replace it with inverted inputs and an inverted output. Okay. <laughs> Darn off, we have no idea where you're going with this. Well, let me show you where we're going with this. Notice this is an AND gate with an inverter at its output. This is an AND gate with an inverter at its output. This is an AND gate with an inverter at its output. Does an AND gate with an inverted output sound familiar? Yes, we talked about that circuit called an active low circuit. We specifically, when it came to AND gates, we referred to the NAND gate. And the NAND gate was a higher performing uh, circuit because the zeros, the logic zeros, those are driven by electrons. And since the, act, since the electron is the active element that's, that's creating this, this logic level, these tend to be faster than just a straight AND gate. In fact, NAND gates tend to be one of the fastest gates we've got out there. So when it comes to this circuit, this circuit that I've made quite a mess of, the whole thing can be done exactly in the same format we had before the same exact format we had before, except all the AND gates get replaced with NAND gates. And the OR gate also, and I forgot my inverter here for C, and the, uh, and the OR gate also gets replaced with a NAND gate. And so we talked before in the previous lesson about how some of products expressions are faster because they, 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 they create a circuit and a Boolean expression from a truth table into a two layer logic. The minimum number of layers for the vast majority of circuits, two layers of logic. Not only that though, if we replace all the AND gates with NAND gates and the OR gate with a NAND gate, we've also taken those two layers and implemented them with the fastest gate. So. This sum of products expression is quite versatile. You'll find out that it's easy to come up with a truth table from, uh, easy to come up with an expression from its truth table, and we get a very fast, efficient circuit as a result of the expression.